This is me, the Undead Viking, and this is uh, British versus Pirates. This is a miniatures tactical game of uh, ship combat during the golden age of piracy. Now, a quick little segue uh, to my past, as I want to do in some of these videos. Um, when I grew up, um, junior high, I mean, this is, what, 30 years ago or so. Jeez, that's a long time ago. <laughs> wow. Uh, anyway, so when I was growing up, I played a lot of games like uh, Battletech and Car Wars. Um, I, I, I always loved the dudes on the map or the, 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 the vehicles on the map type of games. Um, I liked the whole process of moving them around, getting them in situations where you could fight and shoot and blow up my friends. That was just something that we really enjoyed and we played a lot of and it was really enjoyable for us. Now, uh, one of the things uh, that as I got older that I got into was I got into a lot of miniatures gaming as well. Um, I played a lot of uh, uh, Warhammer, not Warhammer 40k, but actual like you know Warhammer uh, Fantasy. Um, and then I also uh, a buddy of mine, man, I haven't seen him in a long time. A uh, buddy of mine named Darren, uh, like actually uh, introduced me to a game called Man of War. Now, if you know what that is, um, it is the Games Workshop. A miniatures game of, of ship combat and I really liked that I mean I, I didn't have a huge fleet or whatever but I really really enjoyed that and I had a lot of fun with it and I think I one of the few people that actually really enjoyed when they kind of came back with it a little bit with dread fleet which was like kind of like this little one shot um, like uh, miniatures uh, you know, fighting game with with ships you know again so uh, when I was contacted uh, by the designer of this game and he told me about it, I got really excited because I miss that. that. I mean, there's tons of miniatures games out there for all kinds of genres. And that, there probably is one. I know there's like Sales of Glory or stuff like that. And there's some other things out there, but nothing, I mean, I don't know, I was never really grabbed by the options that I have available to me. And I always kind of look back at that Man of War era for me, and I really, really liked that game. Now, I can't, I'm not comparing this to Man of War at all. I mean, they're, they're kind of, you know, they're, they're in the same bucket, you know, but they're not alike, if you will. But what appealed to me about this game was the fact that it was a very very simple rule set and by simple i don't mean like like you know lame or anything i just mean simple like being able to dive in and understanding how to run the tactical you know combat really really quickly and being able to just go with it and roll with it and have a good time i i, I like the fact that it was really straightforward and i like the fact that it had a really really great theme a theme that i really enjoy um if you watch my videos you know that i'm big big fan of piracy and the pirates and that whole genre of, of, of stuff I love the movies I love the shows I love all that all that junk and um, and so like to be able to play that in some quick little setup quick little play uh, type of situation I was really really intrigued and I was really excited to play and lo and behold I got the game I had a heck of a lot of fun with it and I'm gonna show you how to play now so let me show you how to play British versus pirates and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you more about why I dig it all right cool so this is British versus Pirates. I've gone ahead and set up a two-player game, just basically so I can show you how the uh, mechanisms of the game work. Uh, you create the game and the game board uh, by using these C tiles. These C tiles, um, you get plenty of them. Uh, basically, with a, with a two-player game, you're going to have your center tile here in the middle uh, that just has this one uh, little island there where this wind vane goes. You can see which way the wind is going, because remember, these are uh, sailing ships, so you're relying on wind for your power. Uh, and and then you have uh, just be, be kind of like your bases. Technically, it isn't really a base, so to speak, uh, but it's just the tile in which you start. Now, if you were playing with two other people, like you'd have a tile here and here, for example, and so you'd have a larger area uh, to run around in. Um, so, just you know, you do get several of, of these uh, the, these tiles, and they are you know, two-sided. So depending upon if you want to play with islands, if you just want to have open ocean, all kinds of options you can go with it. And you, once again, this is one of those games that is variable. Like, it gives you those options, it gives you those th th that ability to change things up, and something that I've always uh, really enjoyed about these types of games. But anyway, regardless, uh, just want to show you exactly what you're looking at. Um, here you just have these miniatures, and once again, this is a prototype, so the miniatures you see here uh, may or may not be indicative of what you're going to see uh, once the game is published. 
Uh, you have miniatures that are going to designate uh, the different ships, um, just you know, so you can tell basically, uh, really obviously, you know, like here's the front of the ship and there's the back. Um, why that's important is because depending upon the type of ship you have, um, where the wind, how the wind affects it, is going to affect like how fast it goes. Um, depending upon the direction it is facing, depending, it will determine uh, whether its guns are able to you know hit certain targets, things like that. Um, each ship. Uh, comes with a card. You can see I put out the four cards for the four ships that I'm going to use. But I'm just going to show you one. So here you have um, La Furia is, is the name of the ship, and you can see it is a pirate ship. You know, one, because you can see there's the pirate flag up there. Uh, but two, like the uh, the, the British ships, um, you know, are like they say, like, you know, Her Majesty's ship, you know, uh, like, you know, or you know, so that you can tell it's an HMS. So you, you know, it is a, a British ship, if you will. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a pirate pilot one of those. It doesn't really matter. Uh, before the game begins, each person person will pick you know what what you have and you can play teams obviously you could have people you know have one person be the two people be the british two people be the pirates um have two british people gang up on one pirate you could have a free-for-all just see who survives the last you know just to, just once again that variability in these games that i enjoy but anyway so i can just kind of give you an idea um the type of ship is listed here uh it is a galleon uh that is important for um a lot of things basically thematically the, the ship will be be like slower um, and have be tougher to uh, you know you uh, break down and, and destroy than say a sloop uh, and have more guns but once again like I said it's slower less maneuverable that sort of thing uh, so uh, it also I should mention and I'll get to those in just a second uh, certain uh, captains, you can see there's these captain cards here, uh, certain captains will get bonuses for using certain types of ships, so if you can match the captain uh, with the type of ship, uh, you'll get that bonus. Alright, so you can see here you have like a speed and a pivot. Alright, so um, the pivot is the turn. So like, just think of like, you know, if, if you're, you're pivoting, that's, you know, just turning one little hex. Now, when you're doing your speed, um, you get to go, you know, the, the, the speed of your ship, and then you can pivot, or you can pivot and then move. You can't, like, if this was moving three, you can't go one, two, then I'm going to turn and go three. You'd actually, you have to go one, two, three, and then pivot. So uh, just keep that in mind. You can't turn in the middle of one of your moves. But to determine how fast you go, what you do is you determine, you see which way the, the, the speed is, or which way the wind is going. So in this case, with the galleon, it wants the air, the, the wind coming behind it. So if the, you know, if it's pushing against it from behind, it's going to have a speed of three. If the, it's pushing, going right into the wind, it's going to have a speed of one. Now, maybe you don't want to go super fast. Maybe you want to go slow. I mean, you know, so that's an option for you as well, you know, if you want to actually turn into the wind or whatever. Uh, but, you know, just that's what that means. And then so the pivot one. Now let me just show you like say a, a quicker ship. Let me find a sloop to show you and you can kind of compare uh, the two. Um, so a sloop as I said is going to be faster and it's going to be more maneuverable. So here we have the Shifty Crow which is an awesome name um, and you can see it has a speed of you know three 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 and then unless the wind is behind it directly behind it, it's one and, and you might say well how, well how does that even work well um like it's a sailing ship for like a sloop they actually like would use the crosswinds and things like that to like speed it along which is kind of cool and then you can see it has a full pivot of three now because you have a pivot of three does not mean you have to turn three times you just have the option of turning three times so you can kind of see the difference between those two now the other things that are listed on here let's go back to the La Furia, like we were looking at to begin with, you're going to see um, that the, you have this, uh, the cannon range, and it actually like goes, uh, the 24 pound Sacker cannons, and it has the cannon range and the number of dice you're going to get to roll uh, to do the damage. So here you can actually see uh, like if it's one space away, like the can, like the whatever you're shooting is one space away, you get two dice, and the can accuracy is one. Uh, two spaces, you get three dice, and the can accuracy is three. And then at three spaces, it's two and four. So depending upon, and once again, this is one of those things where you're going to be trying to strategically get your ships into the spot where they can uh, shoot and be better. And so, you know, and though that's going to be obviously uh, be different, you know, for different ships. So like, you know, here the Siren Song, you know, it, it at three spaces, it's, you know, less accurate. You, know, you want to kind of be in that sweet spot of two spaces with the Siren Song. So it is different with, with each ship. 
the last thing I'll show you uh, is like you have this little thing here, like the structure of the ship, which is the middle part, like the, the main part of the ship. Uh, if that ever gets reduced to nothing, then your ship sinks. And that's like the whole point of this game is like to knock out other people's ships and destroy them, right? All right, so uh, if this goes down to zero, it, the ship sinks and that is out. Now, the other parts, like the the front, you know, the starboard, I, I should say starboard, so it's the right, the starboard, and then port, and then the bow, if you will, they're going to have different uh, hit point totals. And you can see the, the hit point, and you can see that I have those six sided on those spots. Um, you have six sided that determine that. So you have, a, and then this actually tells you what the starting value is. So the structure is six in the middle, it has a three for the uh, stern, and then with stern, bow, I'm probably screwing that up, I apologize. But you can see that starboard and ports are both five, and the back, or the, the stern, uh, is a six, right? Now, if you lose one of these, like if it reduces down to nothing, you get rid of the die, and then you actually then show uh, the, the, the difference here. So. You can see, like, uh, the port cannons uh, cannot shoot if this gets reduced. Uh, the starboard cannons cannot shoot if that gets reduced. Pivot reduced to one. Reduced, uh, to one. Uh, and then uh, ship speed reduced to one. So, like, you can see those things happen. And But, obviously, the one that you want to worry about is this one in the middle. If that ever runs out, uh, you are done. All right, so that's the ships and how those work. Oh, and I should, I, I apologize. Uh, one other thing. So, uh, like, these these bonuses you can see like a uh, plus six plus six plus four plus four and let me show you uh here i want like a sloop really quick actually let me show you a different uh, type of ship this is a zemic um so uh, the, the, so the plus four, plus four, plus four, plus three, those are the defenses for those different locations and if they're being shot at. And and then so what you're gonna do is like, so this one starts at a four and it's a plus four. The defense for um, the port side of this, this particular uh, ship uh, would be, uh, you know, I just realized six turn, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Anyway, so, uh, anyway, so th th you can see then it would be an eight. But as you take damage, each time you're hit and you're struck uh, uh, accurately with, with a cannon fire, you reduce it by one. So you can see that slowly but surely your defense gets less and less on those locations. So like eight and then goes on to seven, six, or whatever. So, all right, cool. Now you've got most of the basics. Let me show you um, a couple of the... Uh, let me just show you a couple of, uh, here's a couple of uh, pirate captains. Um, really quickly, these are pretty simple. Um, these numbers here, this is uh, the, the, the morale that this particular uh, pirate captain uh, can give to you. And you put another die, you can see I have dice. Oh, I actually forgot to put two dice over there. So let me grab them here. All right, we put a five, and then we're going to put a six. So the morale comes into effect when you are going to do uh, boarding maneuvers and repelling boarding maneuvers. You can see grapple and repel. Grapple is when you're trying to board, repel is when you're trying to get rid of them. You can see here, these are those bonuses. So in Captain Apollo, if he is in a galleon, he gets a plus two repel. If he's a sloop, he gets plus one accuracy. Um, Captain Gorgon, uh, gets in a Zebek, he gets plus one grapple, in a sloop, he gets plus one accuracy. So, once again, try to match up your your uh, your pirates or your your uh, British captains uh, in ships that are going to they're going to excel in those locations. All right, so there, that's all of that. The one last thing I'm going to talk about is these skill cards. Okay, so. You're going to start with three skill cards. You get to use these as you will. You have to be at your, on your turn. Um, you're going to get to draw more. Uh, you can discard these at any time and not do anything with them, so you can draw more. Um, skill cards come in lots of different um, uh, things. So, like, you know, just effects like here's a blunderbuss. It gives you plus three grapple, um, plus three bow and stern uh, defense roll. So when you roll for uh, uh, that, you're going to have that. Uh, these, like the blue ones, are kind of like special cards. Uh, pirate ships within two spaces of this ship gain plus two uh, crew morale instantly. Oh, I should mention, I, I'll probably explain this when I do uh, show you how that comment works, but if you have, if you fail, um, if, if you are successfully uh, grappled, um, not only does your ship take structure damage, meaning the middle die takes damage, which is bad, um, your morale drops down to one, which is also bad. You know, so getting morale back obviously is a big deal. Um, some of these cards will actually allow you to change the wind uh, with the way the wind is facing, too. And the way the wind is determined is is like the person who goes second um, gets to determine uh, which way the wind is going. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. 
Uh, and like uh, here, like fire, free the rudder, uh, plus one pivot. And so you have these these four different types of these skill cards that you're going to be using, and you just use them judiciously uh, as you see fit uh, to try to help yourself out and try to uh, you know keep your ship running and keep your uh, giving yourself the best quality. Don't save these, whatever you do. I, I, I had a friend who was playing and uh, he kept on waiting for the perfect situation to use those cards and his ships got blown out of the water pretty quickly because he was just trying to save them for like that perfect moment, which, you know, if you don't have ships anymore, you don't get that perfect moment anymore. But, all right, so... Combat is dice driven and is very easy. What happens is, you know, as I've already explained the movement. You know, you're going to move and pivot, move and pivot. Um, this is a you go, I go type of uh, a game where the like, first person goes, the next person goes, so on and so forth. You just go around the table. Uh, so if you have situations where you have a ship and you, if the ship is within range. So remember, um, these these guns are on the side. Yes, I know they had like chase guns and stern guns before, uh, but those aren't really uh, prevalent in this game. So you just think of the fact that you don't, you, you can't shoot. Uh, you can shoot like straight out from the, the, this corner. Like if you can see this, like so you'd straight, shoot straight out this way, you'd shoot straight out that way, and you shoot straight out this way. So you kind of have like this little like wedge that you get to shoot at. So for example, um, like both of these ships would be in range of the, this side of, you know, the gun. as long as, you know, they, they, I could shoot, my, my guns would go three spaces away. Um, and they'd still, I could still shoot them if you know, the person was there. So, cause remember it's like, it's this wedge that goes like this. And so that would still work as well. So you can do that. Now here, I wouldn't be able to hit this particular ship because it's out of the range. Here's something interesting though. If, for example, we we're in this situation and I was firing with this ship, I could shoot at both of those ships with one attack action because of the fact that both, you know, you have guns on both sides of the ship and you could shoot both of them and you could roll. This is a very advantageous thing to, to uh, be in this situation uh, and try to make that happen as much as possible. And if you are, you know, and if you're playing, try to avoid uh, letting that happen as much as possible. Now you can't, you only get to do one attack. You, you can either attack and then move or you can move and then attack. And you can only do one type of attack. You can't, I couldn't shoot here and then grapple here. Grappling can only occur when two ships are close to each other. You can only choose one particular attack. Um, so just keep that in mind. Attacks are really, really simple. Uh, all you're going to be doing, uh, there, you know, some people might be able, you, you'll be able to, be able to play cards, or whatever, to adjust the rolls. But what you're going to do is like, so this uh, is, you know, my uh, my frigate, right? And so if I'm shooting, one, two, three, uh, Captain Bellamy here uh, is going to be shooting. And if I look at three spaces away, I'm not very accurate. I'm going to have uh, a, a one, one die, and I get no bonus whatsoever. And the defense for this is going to be uh, this this uh, line ship, uh, the HMS Hercules. And the, you know, the, the, the stern or here is going to be or I'm sorry, the bow, I'm already screwing that up, is a seven. So what I'm going to end up doing is, um, and then I'm going to make sure, so like Captain Bellamy gets no bonus, uh, you, you know, he gets a bonus to repel uh, as, as, as a frigate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll one d12, and I'm going to try to get higher uh, than a seven on it. So let's see what I get. I got a 12. Okay, that's cool. So I'm going to hit, and what's going to happen is, is that I'm just going to reduce that uh, particular spot, that location, on that on that ship by by one and so the it, you know and now its defense is lower now if i had been shooting at both of them so now i could i can figure out what this is so um here we have this is going to be the starboard uh of the and i you know, when you're playing it you're going to be like kind of twisting yourself around trying to figure it so this is a sloop uh the starboard is an eight over there and i if you look over here i get three dice Apologize, three dice and accuracy of three. So I'm going to add three to my roll. So here I'm going to roll, and I'm hopefully I'm going to get lots of hits. I'm going to just uh, blast away here. Hold on. All right, so I'm adding three, and the seven, it's an eight. That isn't going to work. Uh, a 14 and a 10, both of those are going to be successful attacks. Now, if that, so that would be one point of damage uh, for each one of those attacks. And so then I would take this die and take it from a four, 
and reduce it to a two. That is as simple as it gets as far as um, doing the attack actions. The trick is is that usually people aren't going to be allowing you uh, the opportunity to just uh, maneuver into a situation where you're going to be able to you know blast away like that. Uh, but you know it can happen. And like I said, the the the, the combat. One of the things I, I really like about it is that the combat is really really quick uh, to determine, and uh, it is really really quick uh, to uh, um, like resolve as well. Now grappling attacks work a little bit differently because both players are going to be able to roll dice. So let's just say we're doing a grappling attack uh, with this sloop and we're going to be grappling uh, this 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 uh, frigate that we have here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead we're going to look at the sloop uh, which in, in, is this uh, Admiral uh, Bowery here and we're going to go ahead and look and he has a grapple skill of one and he has a morale of five. And now, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at uh, this particular, uh, uh, our, or the Captain uh, Bellamy here. And he has a grapple of two and a repel of zero, but he is repelling. So the, the zero doesn't help it, but he's in a frigate, and so he gets a plus one to his repel. And plus, oh, I actually, this is incorrect. He has a four starting, uh, a four starting, uh, morale. So he's going to have a total of five and Bowery's going to have a total of six. And both of them are going to roll a, a d12 and they're going to see what happens. So Bowery, we're going to see here. Remember we had six to this roll. He's going to get a 14. That's not good. So I need a five. I, I'm, I'm going to have to get a, a nine or better on this d12. Let's see what I get here. A five. So that's a 10. That's not going to be enough. So this is what happens when when you successfully uh, board and grapple and do damage. What happens is is that the damage is taken to the center structure of the ship, so you don't even have to deal with any of the other side stuff. We just want and uh, as an added uh, clunk in the in the in the in the toe here, we're going to go ahead and reduce the morale of the ship that lost that uh, by one. Now, if that had failed nothing happens. I mean, you don't lose anything for trying a grapple and failing. You don't take damage or anything like that. Um, you just fail at doing that. But, and I should mention that on your turn, you do get to increase your morale by one each time. And there are, as, I, as you saw, cards within the, the skill deck that'll increase that as well. So grappling is tough to pull off. You have to move in close, which is always dangerous, especially against that's something with a bunch of guns that are gonna just blast you to kingdom come. Uh, but if you can do it, and you can do it successfully, you can you can just skip all the armor that the ship has and just start doing damage to the middle. So it has, it's definitely has its bonuses. And this is where lots of things come into play. You have fast sloops that'll be skating around, staying out of, out of cannon range and then zooming in for a grapple attack and stuff like that. So it has a lot of those little tactical and strategic things going on that I really, really enjoy. So, all right, so you should have a pretty good idea of how to play the game. Um, you know, you just, this is a last man standing type of situation. So whoever manages to uh, destroy the other person's ships first is going to be declared the winner. Uh, and then you can uh, say that you've, you know, either uh, sent the scurvy dogs uh, to the bottom of the deep, or you've brought glory to her majesties uh, and her navy. So, you know, either way. But the game is a heck of a lot of fun. Like I said, it doesn't take a lot of time to set up. It doesn't take a lot of time to play. and But it is still maintains um, that feeling that I want out of a game like this. I, I, I feel the immersion. I feel the fun. I feel like I'm piloting a ship uh, in this, this golden age of piracy type of situation. But let me talk about all of that and more uh, in my final thoughts. Hey, thanks very much for learning how to play British vs. Pirates. Now, I can only imagine that the designer of this game has got to have some ideas for some expansions, and maybe add some more nationalities. Uh, I mean, not that the game needs it right now. I mean, obviously there's a lot of game here, and I've had a lot of fun with it, and we've had a lot of fun, my, my game group and I, and my daughter too, for that matter. She, she kind of took this game pretty quickly. Um, you know, there, there's lots of different, uh, like, things you could do with it, though. I mean, like... Anybody who's played Sid Meier's Pirates, you know, knows that having those nationalities, having the Spanish and the French and the Dutch, you know, having like all those different types of, of pirates and, and, and captains and what have you, you know, really added a lot to the game. And, and I can just imagine like if you had like a couple more nationalities and each person had two or three ships, you have like, you know, a whole table covered in these sea tiles and you could have some just 
mega, like, winner-take-all type of battle, and that would be really cool. But, I mean, you could actually do that right now. I mean, there's enough ships and enough, uh, um, like, captains uh, to, to divvy up, and you can have, you know, like, lots of different ships going at the same time. And, like I said, you don't have to have all the British work together, you could, and you don't have to have the pirates all work together. You could have a total free-for-all type of situation. And that's what that kind of dovetails in the whole idea that, like, you can kind of, yes, there are some very good rules in this game. There are some very good, uh, like, scenarios that they give you and ideas they give you. But there's nothing stopping you from just playing the game the way you want to. You know, just, just goofing around with it, adding your own twist to it. You know, you could have, like, see if three sloops could take down a big giant ship of the line type of situation. You can you can play that. You can do it and see what happens. And I, you know, I've always liked um, games that allow me to kind of, you know, throw a, a, a wrench in the gears and just and, and, and switch it up. Now, I mean, obviously, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the theme, and I like the fact that this kind of really took me back to my old like, as I said, Battletech, Car Wars era. I mean, it's just like, you know, especially with the hexes and, and Battletech, it really, really reminded me of that a lot. You know, just the whole, you know, you know moving and switching the turning and moving and uh, just everything about it just really, really spoke to me. And, and, and that probably is one of the reasons why, like, the game, like, really clicked for me right away is because, you know, my background in miniatures gaming. Now, if you don't have that background, I don't think you're going to have any problem whatsoever. As far as this type of a miniatures, uh, like, tactical game... The, this is rules light. Now, that doesn't mean it isn't rules like, I mean, the rules may be light, but the game itself has some weight to it and has some fun decisions and it has some fun maneuvering and all kinds of things going on. I mean, the best part of gatebug games like this is that you're not really playing the game. You're playing the other person and you're playing against, you know, what their ideas of what they're going to try to pull off, what they're going to do. And, you know, are they going to go for, like, a grapple, you know, and, and try to, like, race in and get it? Are they going to, like, just kind of try to stay away and just take pot shots at you and things like that? And what are you going to do? What are you going to do with those, those situations if they're going to do those? You know, so it is, like, a fun game where it is just you against the other person. And, you know, I, obviously, I, I love dice. And so being able to roll dice and getting that miracle 12 when I absolutely positively need it, uh, you know, is something that I enjoy as well. And this is that type of game that gives you those stories. It gives you that, like, immersion, as I said. Uh, but it also just, like, it, it grips you. And, like, you know, and when you're playing three, four people at the table and, like, you you got to have, like, one good roll. I mean, the clickety, 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 nothing says pay attention to what's going on right now. You don't have somebody sitting on their phone checking their Facebook or anything like that when this game is played. It's quick, it's bloody, it's it's decisive, and, and everybody is engaged all the time. So Because you want to see where everybody's going to turn and go and end up, and how you're going to react to that. So, I love it. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you are looking for a, 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 a cool, quick little skirmish uh, naval game, I really strongly suggest you uh, take a look at this one and check it out, because I think you're going to enjoy it a great deal. So... There you go. If you have any questions about British vs. Pirates, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And as always, you, you, yes you, out there, you have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right? All right.